Oblique triangles, law of cosines, two sides and the angle between them known. In some cases, you'll find that the law of sines will not help you to solve your oblique triangle. For example, if you look at this triangle, triangle ABC, I know two sides, 6 and 7 for sides C and B, and I know angle A is 38. In order to use the law of sines effectively, you have to have one pair of angle and side that are opposite each other. Otherwise, you can't set up the beginning ratio to solve the problem. So in this case, if I look at 38, I don't know the side across from it. If I look at 6, I don't know the angle. If I look at angle B, I don't know it, but I do know the side. I haven't got any ratio that I can use. So I need to rely on another form, and that's called the law of cosines. The law of cosines is a little bit longer, and you'll need to commit it to memory. And we're going to write it up here, and I'll show you all three forms of the law of cosines. If I want to find side A, I can say A squared, and I look at the other two sides, B and C. So I'll start out with A squared equals B squared plus C squared. It starts out looking a little bit like the Pythagorean theorem, but we're going to add a lot more to it. We'll say minus 2 times the product of these two sides, BC, multiplied by the cosine of the angle opposite the original side, or multiplied by the cosine of the angle that is between them. In this case, the angle that's between them is A. So I'll say the cosine of A. So A squared, one side, equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. You can use this for any side of the triangle as long as you rearrange the letters appropriately. For example, if I wanted to find B, I would start out by saying B squared equals A squared plus C squared, the two other sides minus 2, multiply these two sides together, AC, times the cosine of the angle that's between them, or the cosine of angle B. And finally, if I wanted to find C, I would square it, and then I would use the two other sides, A squared plus B squared, minus 2 times their product, minus 2 AB, times the cosine of the angle that's between them. If I look at A and B, I see the angle that's in between them is angle C. So using one of these three versions of the law of cosines will help you to find missing parts in an oblique triangle. Now in this triangle, I have three things missing. I don't know angle B, I don't know angle C, and I don't know side A. Since I don't have that ratio that lets me use the law of sines, if I want to find A, I'm going to have to use the law of cosines. And I'm going to start by using this very first version of the law of cosines. So in this problem, I'm going to say, well, I want to find A, so I'll take A squared, and I'll look at the opposite sides, is, or the other sides. is 6 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 6 times 7, I'm multiplying those two together, times the cosine of the angle that's in between them, and that would be the cosine of 38. Let's review how we set that up. A squared, the side we want, is equal to the squares of the other two sides added together, minus 2 times the product of the sides, 2 times 6 and 7, times the cosine of the angle in between them, times the cosine of 38. Now when we solve this, it's just a matter of punching buttons on the calculator. We don't need to simplify anything here. Okay, we'll move to the calculator and solve this. We'll take 6 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 6 times 7 times the cosine of the included angle. So 38 cosine. And when we hit e equals, we find it's equal to 18.8071. Now we have not solved for a, we have solved for a squared. If we want to complete this equation, we're going to need to take the square root of both sides. It's going to be easy for me to do this because I already have the number in my calculator, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit the square root key of the number that's there, and I find that a is equal to 4.3367. Now I look back and I see my measurement was in meters, so I'll put meters on it. I have found the missing side to be 4.3367 meters. Okay, now that I have found the third side, the missing side, I know that I'll have a ratio between an angle and a side, and I'll be able to solve for the other angles by using the law of sines. 
So when I'm doing this problem, I think what I want to do is solve for angle C first. I'm just choosing angle C. And I know that C is across from the side that is 6 meters long. So if I'm going to make a ratio, I'm going to remember it's the side over the sine of the angle that is opposite that side. 6 over the sine of C. Now the angle that I know is 38, so I have to use the side that's across from 38. I just found that side to be 4.3367. So here's my side over the sine of angle A, which is 38 degrees. Now I'm going to have to be kind of careful about how I solve this. I want to find this, I want to find angle C. So I need it to be alone on one side of the equation. In order to do that, I'm going to have to do cross multiplication on this problem. I'll cross from the upper left to the lower right first, and I get 6 times sine 38. So I'll have 6 sine 38. When I cross from the lower left to the upper right, I'll have 4.3367 times the sine of angle C. If I want angle C to be alone, what I'm going to have to do is divide by the number that's multiplied times angle C. So I'll divide by 4.3367 on both sides of this equation. Because that will make the coefficient cancel out. Now I'm left with sine C alone on one side of the equation. So I want to go ahead and solve this as far as I can using the calculator. It says 6 times sine 38 over 4.3367. So I'll come to my calculator and clear it. And I'll have 6 times the sine of 38 divided by 4.3367, which equals 0.8518. So I do the math, I have 0.8518 equal to the sine of C. Well, I don't really want to know the sine of C, I want to know angle C. If I know its sine, I can find the angle by accessing the second function sine key. So when I look up here, I see sine, and right above it in yellow, it says second function sine. So I'll hit the second function key and sine, and it tells me that this is a 58.41 degree angle. So angle C is 58.41 degrees. Now I don't really like to leave my answer as a decimal when I'm talking about degrees, so I'm going to use the degrees minute second button on my calculator. I'm going to access it by hitting the second key and the degrees minute second button. And I'll get it's 58 degrees, 24 minutes, and 25 seconds. We're going to go ahead and round this off to 58 degrees and 24 minutes. That tells me how big angle C is. Well, let's see, what have we found here? We found missing side A, and we found missing angle C. The only thing that's left for us to do is to find the other missing angle, angle B. We'll remember that all of the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So I know that A plus B plus C has to equal 180 degrees. I know that angle A is 38 degrees because that was given to me. I don't know angle B, but I do know angle C is 58 degrees and 24 minutes. I'm going to add these two amounts together and I'll get B plus 96 degrees and 24 minutes is equal to 180 degrees. I know I need to subtract 96 degrees and 24 minutes from both sides of the equation, so I'm going to do that in this way. I'm going to change 180 degrees to 179 degrees and 60 minutes. I know 60 minutes makes one full degree, so I'm borrowing a degree and changing it to 60 minutes. Then I'll subtract 96 degrees and 24 minutes from that amount. If I subtract just the degree part, I'll get 83 degrees. If I'm subtracting the minutes, 60 minus 24 is 36 minutes. So I know if I subtract 96 degrees and 24 minutes from 180, I'll get that angle B is equal to 83 degrees and 36 minutes. Now I have found angle B, I have found angle C, and I found the missing side A. I did this by using a combination of the law of cosines and the law of sines. I had to use the law of cosines to start my problem because I did not have the ratio of an angle and the side opposite it. I use the law of cosines to find one of the sides, 
use the law of sines to find a missing angle, and then just use what I knew about triangle angles to find the third angle. You're going to use many of these laws in combination to solve the triangle problem. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.